is a quick little uh, shortcut on how to work with different path structure in relation to paste in front, paste in back. So let's get started. I'm going to create an oval from the center by going to my L key. Now for those of you that haven't seen my videos before, I always start out the program by picking up rulers, command R, rulers. So I'm going to bring up a ruler, create a guide, draw from the center. Now I always start out my Illustrator project by selecting A tool. A tool selects a direct selection tool, letter A. Therefore from that point I can go back to that tool by hitting the command and key Macintosh, control key, Windows. So we're going to go to the L key, which is the oval tool. We're going to create an oval from the center. I'm going to hold down the option key and drag. As I drag, I hold down the shift key to constrain. Always let go of your mouse hand first. Now, this is defaulting to black and white, so I don't want to stroke this. I'm going to hit the X key to select stroke. X key exchanges between fill and stroke over here on the left. So I don't want to stroke it, so I'm going to hit the forward slash key, the key that's on the question mark, same key, forward slash, no stroke. And I want to fill it, so I hit the X key. X key toggles the letter X, toggles between fill, stroke, fill, stroke, by hitting the X key, X to exchange. We're going to fill this with, let's fill this with orange. So we're going to create the ring, a ring of Saturn around the planet. Now, a little imagination here, here's a planet. Here's a simple way to do this. It's not selected, now it is selected. It's not selected, now it is selected. It's selected because I hold down the command key. The oval tool doesn't select. So I'm sure a lot of you have experienced in the oval tool, you go to select something and boom, you get this. Because, because you're in the oval tool. The oval tool doesn't select. I could simply hold down the command key, Macintosh control key for Windows, keep the key held down to select something. So we're going to transform this object with the scale tool. We're going to go to S for scale. S selects the scale tool. We're going to pick a point to scale from the center. Now, notice that it's a center here because under view, I have my smart guides on, which is command key U. Makes sense to have smart guides on. It will tell you where you are in relation to the object. Command U turns on, command U turns off. So, with the object selected in the scale tool, I'm going to pick a point to scale from. Click, center. Then I'm going to grab, I'm just going to drag out here and scale down, holding down the option key to make a clone copy. Then I'm going to scale out. So I'm going to scale out and down, holding down the option key to make a clone copy. So now I have a clone of that oval. I didn't have to reinvent the wheel. I didn't have to create another oval. I just need to go to my scale tool to make changes to it. So this oval we're going to fill with purple. Now, here's the objective here. I'm going to hide the guides here to make it less confusing. Command semicolon hides guides. Command semicolon shows guides under the view menu. Hide, show, command semicolon. Now, I'm going to select just this path right here. This anchor point, because I have my smart guides on, I can see that anchor point. I'm going to cut that anchor point. I'm going to cut that selected anchor point. Again, I did that by holding down the command key because I initialized the direct selection tool. The first thing I did was hit the A key, which selected the direct selection tool. Therefore, anytime I hold up the command key, it goes back to the direct selection tool, regardless of the tool that I'm inside of. So if I'm in the pen tool or the erase tool or the align tool, command key goes back to the direct selection tool. So I can directly select this anchor point. I'm going to cut. And when I cut, it's going to cut from anchor point to this anchor point on the left and the anchor point on the right. So command X, cut. Now, very important step here. I want to put it behind this shape. So I select this shape by selecting it by holding down the command key. Now, if you look under the edit menu, I cut this, command X. Now, I don't want to just paste it. I want to paste in back, command B. Command F, paste in front. Command B, paste in back. Control F for Windows, 
control B for Macintosh. So again, let's do this again. So I selected this anchor point right here. Click, I cut, command X. I select what I want to affect. I want to affect the planet. So I select the planet and command B, paste it back. How cool is that? Therefore, it's given the illusion that it's going around the object. These are two separate objects. Now, to make this a little bit more visual, we're going to fill this with a gradient. Now, the gradient that we used here, now here's a little production technique. So, very important step here. In order to affect the object, we need to select the object. We select by holding down the command and key. Okay, so whatever tool you're in, the eyedropper tool, I, the rotation tool, R, the brush tool, B, whatever tool you're in, you simply hold down the command key to select. So we're going to fill this with a gradient, more specifically a radial gradient. So I don't want to have white going to black. I want to have white going to the color I had before. So I'm going to take this color and drag it right to there. There's my orange color. Now I can select both these objects at the same time. Okay, so I'm going to basically click gradient again. Now I don't want to have that color gradient, so I'm going to take the purple that we used and drag that right to here. So there's my purple gradient. Now the super cool part, in order to affect all, we need to select all under the A, command A under the select menu, select all, control A, Windows, command A, Macintosh. Now all is selected, we want to change the gradient direction so we can go to our gradient tool, G for a gradient, letter G. I'm going to take my gradient and just drag through here. So with the gradient tool selected, I can just drag through here. Now, in this particular case, we want to have a linear, a radial gradient. So we want to make sure that both sets of radial because it defaults to linear. So let's undo this for a second. So this is a radial gradient, and this is a radial gradient. So they're both radial gradients. We're going to go to a radial gradient selection tool. G, G is the gradient tool. We're going to drag through here. So wherever I click, how this tool works is wherever you click, that's where it starts the gradient. Wherever you let go, that's where it ends the gradient. So if I click from here to here, I'm going to get a bigger gradient. If I click from here to here, I'll get a smaller gradient. So this is totally dependent on how you use the gradient tool. But that just adds a little more texture and depth to the gradient. And that's how I use paste in front, paste in back. So in this particular technique, I cut, select what I want to affect, paste in back. So again, let's just do this real quick. So L key, create the O. S for scale, pick a point to scale from. Come out here, drag as I drag, hold down the option can make a clone copy. Come out here and make sure you let go of your mouse hand first before you let go of your keys. Let go of your mouse hand first. Let's fill this with, uh, actually let's just fill this with a different color gradient. So I'm going to select this pink, take the pink swatch, drag it down to the gradient. Kill this guy here. Okay. Now again, because I have my smart guides on, I'm going to select this anchor point. I select the anchor point and I cut command X. I select what I want to affect. Now important step here, if you don't select this guy first, if I simply hit paste and back command B, it's going to put it behind, it's going to put it behind this guy by default. So select what you're going to affect. So let's do this again. So I'm going to select here. I'm going to cut. Now, by default, this is selected. This object here is selected. So if you command B, it's going to put it behind this object. That's not what I want to put it behind. So when you cut command X, select what you're going to affect, which is this purple sphere, and paste and back again. Edit, paste in back, command B, control B, paste in front, control F, Windows, command F, Macintosh. And that's how I get something to go to the back.